You're not going to want to miss the next episode of the AI show. Where we talk all about responsible AI support for image and text models. Part two of a two-part series of responsible AI dashboard. Make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI show. We're talking all about responsible AI support for image and text models. I have my friend Jacqueline here. Why don't you tell us who you are and what you do, my friend? For sure. Thanks, Seth. Really excited to be here. Um, I've been working on the responsible AI tooling for object detection models. I'm so excited to be able to share that with you all today. Fantastic. So if you can give us, uh, we, people can watch the part one, but if you can give us a sense of what the RAI dashboard is, and then maybe what it looks like pointed to the image problem. Can you do that? For sure. So essentially what we want to do here is to really accelerate the responsible development of both text and image models focusing on image today. And so we'll be diving into um, how this dashboard will be able to help ML professionals to holistically assess and debug their models for any kind of fairness issues using Azure Machine Learning's um, responsible AI dashboard. And that's cool. I've always found like, how do you do that with images though? So I'm interested in what that looks like. Can you show us a little bit about how one might go about this? For sure, for sure. All right, so what you see here is the responsible AI dashboard for image specifically for the object detection scenario. And so I'll be showing just a quick walkthrough of how you can be identifying fairness issues in your models and data, um, diagnose why those issues are happening and inform more targeted mitigations. And so here today we'll be focusing on object detection models predictions on images from the MS Coco data set um, and how we can use the dashboard to debug those predictions. Nice. So. The Responsible AI Dashboard for Object Detection has three main features. It has the Model Overview, Data Explorer, and Model Interpretability. And so to start your analysis, the, um, model, the model Overview here provides a comprehensive set of performance metrics so that you can evaluate your object detection model across data set or feature cohorts. And so in the data set cohorts pane, um, you can view these performance metrics across all of your data and how that compares to any data set cohort you create. For example, here, I have a group of images of people with either skis or snowboards. And since I've selected the person class um, from this dropdown here, the table now shows the average precision and the average recall scores for detecting the person class. And to evaluate your object detection models, um, Prediction uh, confidence, um, you can also set the IOU threshold value. IOU here refers to intersection of union between the ground truth and prediction bounding boxes. And so this really defines error and affects the calculation of these model performance metrics. Um, and so this can help you better evaluate your object detection model. And at the bottom, we do have metrics visualizations that provides a visual comparison of performance metrics across the data set cohorts. And so these insights are useful because a common issue in responsible AI is that a model may have high accuracy overall, but perform poorly for certain subgroups of data. And that can result in unintended, unintended harms. For example, a face detection model can perform worse for certain ethnic groups than others. And so these failures are hidden if we only look at aggregate performance metrics and not um, kind of sub segmented into groups of data to evaluate the model. And another lens to evaluate performance is based on feature-based cohorts. Um, and so for fa fairness of evaluation, this is useful if you want to examine your data based on sensitive features. Um, and the feature cohorts pane, you can automatically create um, a default of three cohorts um, split according to values of the feature that you specify. Or you can also adjust you know, which features to use to evaluate your model's fairness and determine the number of feature splits that can be used here. And so with more granularity of feature splits, you may be able to more precisely um, pinpoint those error cohorts. All right, now uh, moving on, uh, we can use the Data Explorer component to um, further debug and diagnose any discrepancies that you notice um, in the model overview section. And so this Data Explorer has various views to provide different perspectives of your data. And so first, the Image Explorer here allows us to easily view all of these image instances instances and predicted in ground truth bond bounding boxes by um, segmented by both error and success instances for you to observe any error patterns. And so here I can um, filter these images um, shown by index and classification outcome. 
So um, for example, maybe based on previous um, observations of model performance across feature cohorts, I may want to specifically investigate um, certain images that are based on certain feature values. I can also stack multiple features, um, multiple filters, and kind of create a new court from there. And then next, we have the table view. And so this pane shows different metadata features along with um, the data set index, ground truth, predicted class labels um, for each of the image instances. And so this is also where you can create a new data set cohort to analyze in a more granular ma manner. See, I'm, I'm kind of manually I'm selecting these images here and I could save it into a new cohort for more evaluation. And then lastly, um, we also have the class view pane, which breaks down your model's predictions by class labels. And I just want to also want to highlight here um, our last kind of cornerstone feature, which is being able to vis um, access visual explanations for model behavior leading to object detection. And so this is really helpful to debug what contributes um, to misdetections and any biases that may occur. Um, and this is really unique to the object detection scenario. So going into this feature here, if I click on a, this, this instance, I can see um, that the model's pred uh, prediction is aligned with ground truth. It's a successful instance. The person and the ski was correctly detected. Um, and this visual here is a saliency map that highlights parts of an image that contribute most to the model's detection. And so this is generated by um, visual explanation methods, which is MSR's open source package that implements DRISE. Um, DRISE is a model agnostic method to visually explain your object detection models um, that you can learn more later in our um, blog and technical documents. Um, in this feature, um, in this visual, I can see that really highly salient pixels as indicated by these really intense warm colors are focused on the correctly detected person. And so there is no, as you can see, there's no um, saliency pixels towards most of the skis. And this shows that the objects around the person don't contribute to the prediction as significantly as the person itself, which is what we desire from our model. And so um, this is confirmed behavior, but when we look at the skis and how the object, the model detects the skis, notice that there are saliency pixels on the skis here and so on the person's legs. Um, and so this may imply that the co-occurrence of the person and the skis is leading to bias in the prediction of the skis. And so imagine if there was, um, you know, a pair of skis on a wall, um, you know, would the skis be successfully detected without a person? And so this would be, you know, maybe an area of investigation I would want to go in where maybe I'd want to consider adding more images of just skis without the person to avoid the model making spurious correlations between the skis and the person object, even if this leads to a correct detection. And so you can kind of repeat this process even with missed detections. And yeah, that's basically what we have with the object detection dashboard. Wow, this is really cool. So I'm gonna ask a bunch of questions if that's okay. For sure. So is this, how, how is this, does this work with any computer vision models or do you have to train the models in a specific way? Does it come from automated machine learning models or, or how do you get those models? And then is there, in, in the last video, we saw a process where you had to actually explicitly tell it to make this dashboard. Is that the same process? So the first question is what kind of models? And the second is how do we make this dashboard? For sure. So for models, um, this uh, this dashboard covers both auto ML and non auto ML models. Um, for non auto ML, um, we cover PyTorch mod models, so that includes Hugging Face um, as well as others. And um, in terms of setting it up, I think that was your second question. Right. Um, this goes to the same process as setting up a text um, as text dashboard. And so you can look into or maybe our documentation for certain kind of That's other cool. um, details that differentiate the two. It's basically a call to a component run kind of thing. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Uh, so then the, the second, uh, the third, I'm already on number three, there was a lot of this, this notion of mean pixel value. Uh, remember you were able to separate the cohorts and the mean pixel value greater than, is the mean pixel value, and I and if I, if I sound really dumb, that, that it, that's it right there. Uh, let me know if it's the wrong thing. Does that mean the average value of the pixel? Um, I believe so. Okay. So. Okay. I, yeah. And I think that's cool. If if that's the case, that's actually really cool because it lets you look at images based on saturation to see if there's bias with darker images versus lighter images, which is 
I mean, I'm not trying to say anything, about, but that is actually uh, really cool. So the last thing I want to ask you, and, and this is probably the, the fun bits, is where can people go to find out more about this stuff? I know you gave me some links. Here's the first one. What will people find here in the REI Vision Insights? For sure. So this is our uh, link to our technical documentation. And so if you're looking into detailed information of how to set up this Responsible AI dashboard and what all these components mean, any limitations or guidance on like your data set and your models, this is where you'll find all of that information. Fantastic. And it looks like this helps you understand the dashboard as well. Uh, this one, right? Yep. This goes into the dashboard components and what each of them mean. Well, the first one was more on setup. Amazing. And like I said, I the REI dashboards are, I still need to dive in and understand because there's so much information there that it's even overwhelming for me. So make sure you, you take a look at this. And then finally, uh, before we go, there's a cool blog that will talk about both the text and the image uh, REI stuff. Is that right? Is that what this blog is? So this blog primarily talks about the image, particularly the object detection scenario okay. that I just walked into. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us, my friend. For sure. I'm happy to be here and to share. Thank you oh, for amazing. having me. Amazing. All right. Well, you've been learning all about the responsible AI support for images and text models. Part two, where we talked about images. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.